Right, I'm going to talk about weight to the rich curvature in Riemann Finster geometry. Now, if you have heard about Finster geometry, so what is about Finster matrix? Okay, a Finster matrix, roughly speaking, is just a family of norms on the tangent space. Since you have a norm on each tangent space, so you are able to uh, measure the length of a curve, then you can get a so-called distance function uh, over the manifold, okay? And, but you don't have an inner product in the usual sense at every point. So uh, a thin symmetric uh, is going to be uh, the function, actually, on tangent bound, okay, a function, a thin symmetric is going to be a function on the tangent bound, Uh, manifold M is uh, a function okay, F uh, defined on tangent bound. And with the following property, uh, first of all, uh, it is smooth, otherwise we cannot differentiate. It is smooth on the tangent bound away from zero section. Second, uh, it it has a foreign homogeneous condition. Now, here I have to use the x and the y to denote the vector of y at the point of x. So here's a, okay, and this is a positive lambda, okay? So we, you, we denote uh, a vector, a point on Tm by x comma y, and the y is a tangent direct at point x, okay? So in other words, y is, okay? Sometimes we are not going to distinguish between the coordinates of point and, and the point. Okay. And the third condition is going to be uh, the following. So you can define the Hansian of square for L. <laughs> so this Jij, it depends on x and y, is going to be half of f square, y i y j. This is positive, definite, okay? Okay, uh, of course it's aware why it's not going to be zero, okay? Now these three conditions implies, uh, implies F satisfying this following inequality. Uh, here is the triangle inequality. Okay, that's a, uh, that's a simple exercise. Okay. <clears throat> so now you have a symmetric. Now we can express the remaining metric in this setting. Okay. Usually remaining metric is a family of inner product on tangent space, right? And uh, a remaining metric actually is a metric, is a thin symmetric, so that the GIJ is independent one. Okay. Uh, so we can also express the thin symmetric uh, in this form. Okay, here y is just the tangent vector at point x. Okay, now f is say the remaining metric if uh, gig is independent from y. Okay, so f is the remaining most uh, at point x. If gij x y is just a function of x only, okay. Now for uh, for general thin symmetry, we have a uh, uh, two um, important identity. First of uh, quant uh, uh, quantities. Okay. First of all, we have so called the Carton portion. Okay. The Carton portion is defined at every point. It's defined in the following form. It depends on x and y, and this is a, it's going to be half of, yeah, the third derivative of f square, partial y, partial j, okay, okay, that's it. And uh, it's a remaining if only if it's a zero. So this characterizes a remaining matrix, okay. And you can also, uh, consider the average, the average is going to be 
uh, it can be defined in this form, uh, GI. Okay. Now I'm going, to, yeah, this is called the mean Gartan quotient. And there was an important theorem says that uh, this just mean curve, this one zero if only if uh, uh, F is remaining at the point X, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that theorem. It's not easy to show, okay? All right, and now let's consider volume form, okay? A volume form, uh, dV, our uh, manifold locally can be expressed in the following way, sigma x and dx, dx n, okay? Now, if the matrix is Riemannian, then, uh, then the volume form is going to be just a determinant, okay? If f, the, the so-called, there is a, a, a nature volume form associated with the Riemannian matrix. So if f is a Riemannian, Then uh, there was a, a natural volume form called the remaining volume form. This is actually is going to be determinant of a gij x dx1 dxn. But in general, you see, if the match is a finsler, then we have a trouble. Okay, uh, and the determinant of gij is going to be a function of y also depends on y. Okay, but we can. Uh, for a general thing symmetric, for a thin symmetric F, which now is going to be expressed in this form, okay, and we can define so-called distortion. That depends on X and Y. It's nature log. I still formally consider the determinant, but now this one. Uh, uh, this one depends on y also, and the compare with the, with the volume form, okay? This is arbitrary volume. So this is a defined and dv, okay? So for those two structures, you can calculate uh, this ratio, okay? This will be independent choice of particular coordinates. And this is called the distortion. Okay. And uh, uh, a simple fact you can show that is the above arc, the mean garden torsion is going to be the partial derivative. Okay. So mean garden torsion is zero, then the distortion will be constant, independent one. That's a quick, uh, we needed that. That's why I have to mention this. Now, uh, locally minimizing curve can be characterized by the system of ordinary differential equations, okay? Which is going to be written in this form, okay? All right, so what is GI, capital GI? Capital GI use a first variation um, formula. First variation method, you can get the following formula, okay? It depends on X and Y here. The partial derivative, and uh, this is going to be uh, <clears throat> so this is the IL, okay? And uh, yj and l here xk and this is will be kl xj okay and the yj yk okay so uh, it, it's very similar to see you maybe you're familiar with the crystal symbol in the many geometry yes that's true Okay. In the remaining case, this is uh, just the half of the crystal symbol. Uh, okay, in the remaining case, this is half of gamma i j k x y j y k uh, if f is remaining. So in the general case, you also have a, 
uh, a system differentiating bodies uh, that characterizes uh, geodesics. Okay. Now, what I want to point out is uh, this vector field on the tangent bound. This is a well-defined vector field. Is a well defined vector field, okay, on the tangent bound, okay, and uh, when you when you change the local coordinate, and this will be not changed, okay. So this is a G is called the spray of F, right, and we don't pay much attention to this vector field uh, in 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 the remaining geometry. All right, so what is the next step within the little curvature is a central concept of, of, um, of a geometry, right? Metric spaces. So we have to have a notion of curvature. And this subject is called a Finsler geometry because Finsler did some primary research in his PhD thesis in 19, uh, uh, in 1918. Uh, okay, but Finsler did not introduce the notion of the curvature. You know, Riemann, the first time you know, when Riemann, you know, introduced the notion of the curvature, right? That's what we got, you know, so called Riemann in geometry. But Riemann did not uh, describe, yeah, introduce the notion of the curvature, you know, okay? So um, there's a person uh, called Bewa. Around 1926, he Finally figured out, yeah. Uh, we finally introduced the, the notion of curvatures. Curvatures have a meaning okay, for the Finsler uh, metric. Now, it's actually right now it's easy to view it okay, using slightly different language. Okay, so we let NGI to be just partial derivative. Okay, and then gamma JK, this is a formally the Christopher symbol, okay? Then we can, we have a uh, on TM, okay? This is on TM, okay? On TM in the local, natural local coordinate system, okay? And then uh, for some price, we can let the omega i to the xi, okay? It now has xi, yi, okay? That's a local coordinate. And the omega n plus i, this is delta y. But it's not dy, okay? That will be dy i plus n i j d x j, okay? Then, uh, then actually, uh, omega one to omega n and omega n plus one to omega n plus n. That's that's, that's those are two sets of uh, uh, local one forms. They are they are determined uh, 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 the composition for the cotangent bound of uh, of uh, of uh, here, so in other words, the star T T M okay, is going to be uh, uh, the X I span delta Y I. Okay, so this part maybe you can call it horizontal. Okay, this is a vertical. All right. That's not uh, what we want to talk about. So now I'm going to introduce the, uh, the, the connection forms. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then the next part is very natural. So first of all, you have d omega i right, is going to be omega j wedge omega j i. You know, sounds familiar, right? No. The next one is we put okay? so this is called a curvature form, remember, right? But this curvature form has a natural decomposition. Then the first part is this, and the second part. Uh, so we have an additional part. Now, uh, if the match is Riemannian. The second part is zero. So we, we denote it by B because we're trying to give credit to the bear one, okay? And the first part we denote by R because we want to give credit to the remap. 
So this is a rima. This is a bare one. Now, uh, generally two forms. You have an addition term here, omega uh, n plus k wedge omega n plus l. But uh, using the above uh, identity, using this identity, okay, you can show that uh, the third term is zero, okay? So you only have two terms essentially, okay? So you, uh, you can express without too much trouble this and uh, scale are uh, expressed in terms of GI, okay? You can write down the formula without any trouble. I don't want to mention that. It's just type in you know, I have to write. But what I want to talk about is BIGKL. That one gives you a very simple formula. Okay? This is going to be third derivative. Okay? Actually, it's going to be a tensor okay? on Tn. And uh, clearly, uh, BIGKL equals zero. If and only if and gi um, is going to be in that form, quadratic. Okay? okay? So, in other words, if and only if gamma i g k x y is independent of y. Okay? So, you, you get a, uh, you can use this as a, as a coefficient for connect, linear connection. So, you get, in this case, you get a linear connection on here. All right. Now, what is important is remember the the, the geodesics equa uh, the equation the geodesic equations, right? This equation determines the geodesics. Then you can uh, have so-called explanation map, right? So-called explanation map defined by uh, by geodesics, right? Now, very important uh, point here is this explanation map is not necessarily differentiable at the origin, okay? And uh, just because this system of differential equation it's not quadratic, this part is not quadratic in the, in the first derivative of the x, okay? So the, here's the important fact is this explanation map is C infinity at the origin for any P on the manifold, if and only if the B, I, G, K, L is zero, okay? Now, the plenty of, uh, the plenty of uh, non remaining matrix with this property, okay? Uh, but not all, all the things are matrix. So there, there, there are many non remaining uh, matrix uh, satisfy this uh, condition, okay? So be careful when you, 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 you for general things symmetry, you don't have the normal coordinate systems, okay? So some, when you, when you, when you, when you prove something, be careful when you don't choose a normal coordinate system, okay? All right, so now let's go back. Uh, uh, you have things, a manifold, you have a thing symmetry, you have a volume form, right? Then, uh, <laughs> We have the distortion, right? The, uh, yeah, I can go back to the beginning of my lecture. You know, there was a distortion. This distortion in general is about zero. If it's a zero, then the matrix uh, is a remaining actually, okay? If it's constant, then the matrix, uh, if it's independent Y, then, uh, then uh, yeah, here's another fact that how uh, is going to be Okay, and if um, if f is remaining uh, at the point x. Okay, I think this is a break. Uh, um, uh, it belongs to the break due to the break. Okay. But right, what I want to do is I want to differentiate this along the geodesic. So here, take a here definition. Okay, for any point y. Okay, y is not equal to zero. Then you have a geodesics, right? C, Y, T, okay? This is a geodesic, okay? Unique, it's a geodesic. 
new direction y. So uh, I'm going to define a quantity that's a derivative of tau c y t c y prime t. Then you set it to, to be zero. So this is a this is called uh, the S curvature. Okay, it plays a very important rule here. And you can differentiate the S curvature again, and you get uh, the derivative. This time, I'm not going to introduce a new notation. So this can be also uh, defined to be S uh, C Y T C prime uh, C prime Y T. Okay. Right, so this is a, it's called the derivative of the SQL around the geodesics. Okay. Now this quantity, let's talk about this quantity. This quantity, we have a local formula. In local coordinates, in local coordinates, Okay. In local coordinates, this curvature can be written in the form. Okay. Okay. So it's diff you know the S curve is defined for the metric and the volume form. Okay, this is coming from the volume form. Right? And uh, what I want to say is, what I want to say is um, uh, if, uh, if F is a Riemannian, okay? If F is a Riemannian, then, and, uh, and the DV is gonna be, the volume form of, uh, of the remaining metric, okay? So that means uh, sigma x is gonna be determinant of a gij, okay? Then, uh, then s is going to be zero, okay? So this is a really non remaining quantity. But if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, If the volume form is arbitrary, okay, so this differ by uh, a function, if negative f of x and dv, right, f, right? f is here as a remaining metric, okay. Then, after you plug into the formula, uh, you can find out this is a df, okay. Just differential of this, okay? It's uh, acting on x, okay? Uh, yeah, just the differential of the function, evaluate it in the uh, direction for y, okay? All right, so this is about the, uh, the, the quantity we see, okay? Now, uh, let's go back to the curvature, okay? Let's go back to the curvature. Remember, we, uh, oops. We have a remaining curvature uh, tensor, right? Four indexes. I can I can set this. Uh, I can change it to a three index. Okay. So this will be a function of x one. Okay. Then using that, I can define um, now what I want to say that this uh, actually they're, they're corresponding to each other. So you can, if you know I k, you can get the which the remaining coverage tends in four index. I think that this will be one third, and. Uh, yeah, let me give you the formula.
Oops. I'm going to get pin back. Just a second. Uh, so you can uh, the four index the the remaining curvature tensor using four index can be uh, expressed in terms of the remaining curvature in two index. So they're corresponding to you know they determine each other. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, this this probably don't need that fact, but I just want to mention. Okay. Uh, let me erase this. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be one third yj. And that will be yk r i l. Okay. This will be y l r i k, I think. All right. So you can see that uh, they determine each other. Okay. Now, we will get a linear transformation for any uh, vector y. Okay. So it's defined in the following way. So Ry, it's a linear map, okay? Uh, so this would be I, I, K. So here depends on the Y, U, K. Okay. So this is also called the Neman, Neman curvature. Okay. Then uh, as a linear transformation, you know, you can talk about the trace of this, right? So the rich curvature, now we have the rich curvature. Right, reach, okay, and actual reach curvature depends on the point and, and the direction. It's going to be the trace of this linear transformation. Okay, now in the local coordinate, you just you just need to uh, take the sum of the, the index. Okay. This is so-called rich curvature. Now for general. Uh, thin symmetric, you are not able to uh, easily define the so-called scalar curvature. Okay, so scalar curvature is the average value of the rich curve, and um, then there are several options to the average of rich curvature. Right. Right. And uh, how do we understand? Okay, the the meaning of the the geometric meaning of this curvature. Curvatures, right? Because we introduce them um, in a similar approach, but uh, but it's, you know it's in the things that are setting. Okay. So for many of us, we are familiar with the many geometry. How do we quickly understand this? Okay. Here's uh, what I want to show you. Okay. And okay. uh, a vector field. Why? Uh, an open set okay, is called a geodesic field okay, if uh, integral curves of y is uh, a geodesic yeah, of f. Okay. So we hear that in the things management, okay? And of course, that kind of a geodesic field thing, okay? Then uh, here's an open set to you, okay? So we, as, we let Y be a geodesic field. Then what? Of F on this 
open set, right? Then you can, um, it induced a Lehmann metric. Okay, we denote by G hat, actually it's defined by this one, okay? And uh, why, how do you do that? At every point, okay, this is defined to be G, I, J, and the X, and the Y, X, right? Okay. So you can have a remaining matrix, then you have a remaining curvature tensor, right? So let this to be, um, U, V, W, you know, denote the Riemann curvature tensor. Riemannian curvature, okay? Of G hat, okay? What I want to say is, okay, here's a fact. For the fact Y, okay, and Ry is nothing but, uh, but this, okay? So, we define the Riemann curvature as linear transformation using um, these differential forms on the tangent model, you know, come from the, yeah, the so-called Bayer connection. But now, as long as you know how to, compute the Riemann curvature of a Riemann image, then you can get the curvature in the fin okay. okay, for the fin image. And the similarly, for the rich curvature is just the trace, right? And this is just as the rich curvature, corresponding rich curvature, but in the direction of y, okay? And then I will put x here, okay? So, so this is an important observation we met before. All right, now I'm gradually um, uh, trying to understand the Laplace and relation between Laplace and the, the rich curvature. But I'm going to discuss that the relationship using uh, and make them to to the uh, to the in, you know, in the remaining setting, then, then we can easily get some estimates, okay? So uh, here's a so-called gradient. Gradient of a function on the things the manifold is defined in the following way. Uh, there's a, this is a, this is a still a tangent vector, okay? But that is a unique tangent vector such that uh, it is going to be okay. Now it's not easy to see why such vectors exist and unique because it involves two variables here, right? If the thing symmetry is Riemannian, and then it's easy to to find out that's a unique uh, uh, vector. But it's a Fritzler because this part, okay? It's a different, you know, so it's not easy to see, but I'm not gonna go to the details around, right? right? So this is uh, the gradient, and uh, when uh, um, we're going to um, set this to be zero if dfx is zero, okay? And in general, uh, the gradient is not uh, going to be smooth, okay? So here's the important uh, note. The gradient is not C infinity at the point X where D F X is zero. Okay. So that's the that is the problem here when things are geometry. Okay. But but this is okay. Now this is a smooth uh, a vector field when if if D F is not going to be zero. Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, another one is called the divergence. Divergence of the vector field X, 
Okay. On the manifold with the volume form only. Okay. It is locally defined in the following way. If this is a uh, uh, expressing in the local uh, coordinates, then x is xi partial partial xi. Then divergence of the of the x is going to be the function. It is defined. It is given by the following formula. Okay, simple, right? <laughs> it's well defined. Independent local coordinates. Now, then I can define the uh, the Laplace. A plusing of uh, of a function. The la plusing uh, of a function on a manifold, you need a two struct metric and the volume form because I need a divergence. I need a gradient, so it's defined in the following way. Uh, okay. So gradient of f, we need a the metric divergence in the and uh, well, we do not artificially define this. Actually, this comes from uh, the euler lagrange equation of uh, energy function. Now, <laughs> now we can see the a uh, distance function. Okay, remember. Uh, this is of course it's not smooth on the whole manifold. Okay, but I'm going to uh, define, uh, I'm going to consider the manifold here. X is, uh, is aware from the catalogs, okay? Catalogs, uh, how can I, uh, uh, yeah, I can uh, describe it in the following way. Uh, this is a M minus cut locals and the point P, okay? So this is a, Find P and the catalogs here. Okay, so inside clearly then uh, this is a C smalls on on this set. Okay, right. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the, the gradient of the row is a geodesic field. Okay, on um, omega P. Okay. And uh, not only that, it's a uh, it's a uh, the lens. Okay, the lens is going to be uh, the lens is identically equal to one. It's never be zero. Okay, it's the smallest. So I can uh, I can uh, uh, define a Riemannian metric. Okay, this is a, a Riemannian. metric on omega p okay now let's see so you have another volume form i can also express a volume form in the form e to the negative fx dvg hat okay this is a remaining the volume form determined by the main metric so what is f of x okay f of x f of x, uh, according to this identity, right? This should be sigma x equals e to the negative f x, and then uh, sigma hat x, right? But that sigma hat of x is going to be the determinant of a gij, okay? So f of x is nothing but the nature log Okay. But this one, remember by definition, right? This is going to be G I J X, which introduced induced by this, right? So, so this is nothing but G I J X gradient. And this is a, uh, we already at the very beginning, we define, uh, this is a value of the distortion in the direction of the gradient of function, okay? So this is a uh, point P, 
And here's the gradient of x point in that direction. And uh, this function actually uh, is nothing but the distortion okay, in the direction. Though. This is a simple observation. All right, so let's, uh, then we can create, um, then we can create an S curvature. S curvature in that direction also, you know, this is a thin symmetry, right? We also have an induced demand match on this omega p, okay? By definition, this is a derivative of, of the distortion around the geodesic. Actually, this is going to be the derivative of this. Okay, All right? And uh, so that's from the definition. Then uh, that's going to be just f, okay? And gradient of f is just simply, just simply right express this, okay? Oh, by the way, I, I should mention that another uh, 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 fact, here's a fact, I have to say that uh, if uh, the same distance function, if, uh, if it defines the gradient, okay, that this one to be the gradient of the same row with respect to g hat, then a simple observation shows that this must be equal, okay? Great. So now the S curvature in the direction of the gradient is nothing but just the F uh, evaluate in that direction, okay? And how about S dot? Same, S dot is going to be the gradient of this and the S curvature, right? Okay. So, uh, so, yeah, let me change this. So, so right hand side, I'm trying to express everything uh, in terms of remaining metric. Okay. So, this is uh, going to be the gradient of our x, df. Okay. So, this is a nothing but the Hansian of f evaluate in that direction. All right, so you see that, right? This has become the Haitian. Okay, now for the, um, for, for the thin symmetry for the volume form and then thin symmetry, okay? We're going to introduce the Haitian, uh, the, the, the weight to the rich curvature. The weight to the rich curvature is defined by the rich curvature plus s dot minus capital N over s square, okay? okay? That's very natural, okay? Then you will see that, and this evaluate in the direction of, of, uh, of the gradient. And then after you plug into everything here, Okay, plus s dot x dx, right? Okay, and uh, we already did a uh, computation above. This is just a rigid curvature in the direction of, uh, of the gradient, okay, of the loop. And this will be just hanging. Okay, this will be n minus n. And here df gradient of that square. And that is a very familiar term we, we see before. This is a, a actually in the many geometry. Okay, this is a nothing but the hat f n. Okay, it's a, uh, This is way to the rich coverage in the remaining jump. This is way to the rich coverage in the remaining jump chip uh, with respect to uh, this is omega p here and the g hat and the df. So df is e to the negative f x dv hat. 
Okay. You see, I translate uh, the, all the notions in the uh, on the fifth manifold to a familiar notions uh, on a remaining manifold was was a was a arbitrary volume form. Now, how about the gradient? Uh, how about the Laplace Laplace? Okay. You see, right on this side, I have a f f d v, right? Then I take, yeah. So then I uh, then I see the 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 weight rich curvature now finally expresses the weight rich curvature on, on the remaining manifold. Okay. Then how about Laplace? Laplace. That is the division, you know, right? Of this, right? Locally, uh, I'm going to express in this form. Okay, so here the gradient locally expressed in this form. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I modify this, and uh, this will be because we know this is going to be gradient rule. Okay. Okay, so not good enough yet. And I have, I repress it by sigma hat. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to I think that this will be sigma hat or sigma. Okay. So what is sigma hat? Sigma hat is the the, the, the coefficients of remaining volume form. Okay. So this is nothing but the Laplace of the remaining metric. Okay. And uh, the other way. Okay. The other one we have to be um, careful. This is uh, nothing but the distortion, okay, in the direction of, okay, right. So this, this is a defined the distortion. That's it. Okay. We already know the distortion is just the F. Okay. And then we switch it. Okay. We got this. And this in the manager geometry is called uh, it's called the weighted Laplace. Wow. Okay, we have uh, the Laplace on the Finster manifold now is actually the weighted Laplace on the on this uh, remaining manifold, on this omega, on this uh, omega p with g hat and the volume form. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let me talk about the. Uh, I spend one minute talking about the geometry meaning of this. Geometry meaning of the Laplace of the distance function. Okay. The geometry meaning of, of this row and of this. Okay. Uh, we, this is a catalog. So we have uh, the geodesic sphere. Okay. This geodesic sphere is going to be the geodesic sphere and the intersection of the geometry. Okay? So this is a small hypersurfaces. And uh, and here we have a remaining metric G, right? And then we have a volume form. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the this this uh, here's a point X, okay. 
this one at the point X is the actually the mean curvature. Okay, of this sphere, okay, in the in in this uh, in this humanity manifold. Okay. And the uh, F row at the point X is uh, mean curvature of this geodesic sphere in, in, in this uh, uh, Riemannian metric measure space. Okay, so that's a small difference. Okay, so you can say that this is going to be the the mean curvature okay, of the sphere at the point X okay, in the Finster manifold with the volume form. Okay. All right. Now, let's recall a result in the Riemannian junction. Uh, this is a, a theorem First, uh, due to uh, Way and uh, Wiley. Okay, so that says that a uh, complete uh, remaining manifold was the volume form, which curvature is going to be n minus or h, and the volume df is greater than negative delta. Okay, then the Laplace of the distance function as long as it's smooth is going to be uh, upper bound. Okay. So where this is on uh, uh, omega p, okay? So where m h delta t is going to be the derivative of an h log e to the delta t h t n. I think that this is n minus one here. Okay, it's inside. Okay. Now what is h t? H as s h t the second derivative zero. So h of zero is zero, h of prime zero is one. Okay. So uh, the proof is just the, you know, change it to uh, an OD inequality of one variable, okay, restricted along the geodesic. Okay. Then using this, you can get uh, the following theorem. I think this is uh, uh, in my book already a long time ago. Okay, so here the Finster met manifold was a volume form. So if rich curvature is greater than n minus one uh, h, and s curvature is greater than delta, okay, the negative delta. It's very similar. You see, you see, you see right? Then the Laplace of the uh, of the distance function is less than or equal to m h delta. Okay, this is on. Okay, and uh, the special case. So actually, after build the bridge, you will see that those two imply each other. The above them is a special case when the metric is remaining. Okay, and uh, the special uh, the special case also implies the general case, okay? Uh, using the above uh, uh, relation, but you already mentioned the relationships already, you know, about, okay? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, what's well, gone, you know, okay? okay. Right, now we also have, a, a, let's recall another theorem, which is, uh, due to chain okay, a long time ago. So this is on the manifold, the main manifold the volume form. So rich curvature, I'm going to use that. Yeah, I'm going to use, I'm not going to put it back here, okay? Uh, this, if it's a less than, it's greater than equal to, so the idea is that you just uh, combine those two bonds into one, okay? Then you you try to get this other bond. 
Okay, this is um, on this bundle. Okay, now what is a uh, m? Yeah, what is a uh, m h cap to n t? Well, this is a uh, defined uh, in the stent form. Oops, uh, this is going to be the derivative natural log h t. Uh, oh. This will be capital N minus one here. Okay. Now, then you can also uh, using the above theorem, you can get the theorem due to alter. This is on the Finsler manifold. Okay. And uh, if the rich curvature, weight to the rich curvature is going to be. So if this is a greater than or equal to capital N minus H, then the gradient has an upper bound and uh, and H zero. This is on the manifold. Okay. And uh, I should have said that this is also, uh, you know, back forward. You can, the special case when f is remaining, you can get a chance result. From chance result, you can get auto theory. As long as you build this bridge between, uh, between the remaining, between the remaining geometry and the physical geometry. Okay. Now, how to, uh, you can use that to get. Um, estimates on the on the volume. Okay, the idea is uh, the idea is a uh, 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 simple. How to using the above uh, estimates on the Laplacian to get the vol to get the volume estimate. So here's the idea. Okay, um, you have a you know this is a, a omega p, right? Now you have this point P, there is a tangent plane here, and there's a unit sphere, that unit sphere. So you can define a map uh, SPM to S2.PT, okay? It's defined in the following way. And uh, on this, um, on the unit tangent sphere, there's the induced of a volume form. Um, on this geodex sphere, it's also a very induced volume form. So I'm not going to talk about that. It's just nature way to define. Then, uh, then you pull back that, you will get eta t y depends on the one. Okay. Now, what is yeah? What is uh, uh, How do we define the map? Okay. The map is defined. Uh, in the following way. So phi t y is just as uh, this there is unique geodesic. And okay, here's a point. C y t. Now for any direction, for any unit of that, you define unique geodesic. So that map. And uh, then you can show that then we have the Laplacian at the point x. Okay, this is x, that's because cyt is going to be the derivative of nature log eta t y. Okay, and uh, so, so now if you have some estimate on the Laplacian, so we can assume that we have some function, okay? This function is positive and also has a following property. And this is a T approaches zero and alpha is positive. We assume that. And uh, so we also assume that the Laplacian of F at point X is can be estimated 
Okay. Then you can show that because we got the estimates, you know, under various coverage condition. Then you can show that. And for t greater than zero, less than t naught. Okay. Then from here, you can uh, you can show that this is a uh, decreasing, right? Okay. And using this, you can uh, easily uh, estimate. This is also decreasing, okay? Uh, actually, I'm going to not decrease, have to estimate. Uh, you get an bond. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Sorry for that. So it's going to be less than equal to xt integral from t and x tau d tau. Okay. So, so t is between zero and t naught. Okay. And then you can also get uh, you can also get the volume. Uh, relative volume comparison here. Okay. Okay. For, for zero less than R, less than capital R, less than T. So once you have a volume form comparison, then you can, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, do lots of, you know, together with the uh, estimate on the Laplace, uh, on the Laplace of the distance function, you can get many estimates, uh, like, like a spectrum, like an eigenvalue of the manifold, and so on, right? You can also uh, uh, control the topology of things the manifold under certain curvature bound, okay? So that would be uh, beyond my talk today. So I'm not going to talk about that. You can maybe find all the references on LinkedIn, okay? So I, I stop here. Thank you for listening.